Let's take a look at group policy today. Now group policy is you know, an enormous, wonderful, and very rich feature of Active Directory. Um, it lets you do all kinds of things, from tweaking your security to installing or forbidding the installation of software automatically across the network. Um, you can enforce users' desktops. Um, there's almost no limitation to what you can accomplish with group policy. Um, we're going to start out just looking at some of the settings. Since I have a few files that we're going to use, and there are several ways to get to the group policy management console, but one of my favorite ways is I like to use a Microsoft management console. Or as a student of mine named Tessa affectionately called it once a Mickey Mouse console. And it has hence been called that ever since. Group policy management we want to add. And we're just going to expand our forest here and our domains. And, and just a quick review. Now remember, normally by default, log on locally privileges are denied. But in this case, we went and edited the default, I'm sorry, default domain policy, default domain controllers policy. And we had to change a couple of things. If we went under policies, and let's go under Windows settings, security settings, and local policies. And notice we had to, you know, we had to grant local logon privileges. Now remember, if you don't do this, um, if you don't grant it, even though it's not, you know, explicitly denied as it is here, it's implicitly denied it unless you choose to allow it. So, I had to add the group domain users to the server so I could log on locally. Otherwise, it would prevent me from logging on as anyone except administrator. But we'll look at a few more features of that. But instead of the default domain controllers policy, what we want to edit. Or what we'll configure now is the default domain policy. So we're going to go here. I'm just going to right click. I'm selecting the group policy object in the GPMC. I'm going to say edit. And let's go look at a few of these policy settings. Okay. First thing we'll start out with is the password policy. And there are a couple of different configurations here. This is a good one to turn on. I have it turned off, but with it turned on, then any user account object that you create, you would have to create with a complex password. Remember, a complex password is a combination of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols, um, such as a colon or a semicolon or apostrophe or something. But a strong password or a complex password would be a combination of three of those four categories. Now in this case it's not defined, but we could define that and that would improve our security a bit. Um, I've got it set to disabled so I can use simple four you know, character passwords just for the purpose of us doing our lab activities today. Minimum password length, again you can adjust that. Probably you shouldn't go less than seven characters for a good password. A minimum password age specifies how long users must wait before they can change their password. So here they can only change it once per day. A maximum password age, just a little over a month. And although this may be a bit inconvenient for some, it's actually a very good idea. Remember that the longer a user has a password, the more susceptible they are to a brute force or dictionary attack and that that password would be guessed. So that's a very good uh, you know, security feature. Enforcing password history. In this case, this setting here being defined would keep them from using the same password um, until they had chosen 24 other passwords. And that would take them a minimum of 24 days due to our minimum password age. So just some of those settings. Let's look at these. Account lockout duration and threshold. Um, these are not defined, but if we were to define it, typically after three bad login attempts is a normal, you know, a normal account lockout threshold. Notice these also have to be defined, and so we will. And then what this would do is, this would cut down a hacker's ability to attack, uh, you know, using a user's account, uh, using brute force software that would go through all the possible combinations of, of characters in a password. Because after it tried it three times, it would lock it out for 30 minutes. And he'd have to wait a half an hour before he could come back and try again. So it would take a much longer 
to try to brute force a password that way than if there were no account lockout threshold. Now, as a disadvantage, um, you know, users may get upset that they're locked out of their accounts. Let's look at Active Directory users and computers. I'm going to go look at a, you know, a locked out account. But they can always call you and, and you can always unlock that account manually if you so choose. So let's go to, oh, let's see, we'll go to Northern Hemisphere, we'll go to Enemy Agents, we'll go to Dr. Evil. And then if I went to the Account tab, if it was locked, this would be checked. And I could simply uncheck that, um, in, this, in this case, unlock account. And that is one way of, of you know, mitigating, I guess, the annoyance if a user types in their password, uh, you know, for more than, than three invalid attempts. Um, and in this case, again, we won't define that. And that's going to also not define the two other policies to go with it, their dependencies on the account lockout threshold. So that's password policy and account lockout, pretty important. Kerberos policy, um, again for Kerberos replication, everything's encrypted via Kerberos and Active Directory, and you can set a lot of those options here, some very useful options. Um, under local policies, here's an audit policy, and we'll take a look at that um, a little bit later. We want to you know, set up or implement auditing. Um, what we're interested in now, we, we want to do user rights assignment and look at some of these options here and we'll take a look at some of the options in security options. So let's go through, um, again one of the ones now, this is defined in the default domain controllers policy, not the default domain policy. So we, even though it's not defined here, we do have permission to log on locally as anybody who's a member of domain users at default global security group that people are added to. Um, this is sort of deceptive because a lot of people don't see the default domain controller's policy GPO. They just see the default domain policy GPO. Um, but re you know, realize that it's not defined here, it's defined in the default domain controller's uh, group policy object or GPO. So it doesn't necessarily have to be defined there. But let's define a few things um, and we'll just kind of look at some of the options. Log on locally, which we've talked about. Uh, allow or not allow log on through terminal services. Create a token object. Page fault, change the time zone, change the system time. You can see that there's a, an amazing level of control you can have over things across the network on all of your workstations and clients via group policy. Um, there's a more explicit deny, unlike the implicit simply not, in, not allowing. Um, let's go down a little bit farther. We'll look at some more of these. Manage auditing and security log, system performance. Restore files and directories, shut down the system. You can even, you know, choose to take away uh, permission for them to click on shutdown. Um, take ownership of files. Um, remember we talked about that we're talking about NTFS permissions, how you could take ownership of an object. And again, we can't control that capability there. Let's look at security options. Um, just going down, th you know, a guest account status. Um, you know, controlling what users can and cannot do. Um, shut down immediately. If I let me spread this out a little bit here. Spread it out just a little bit. And allow unlock without having to log on for mounted devices. Allow to format and eject removable media. Um, you know, again, if we wanted to define this policy, unless we added users here, they would be unable to eject, uh, you know, things from the removable media drive, the CD drive. So that might be useful for keeping people from installing applications or software. Um, in addition, you can also set up, you know, you can control software installation through setting up signatures, and we'll talk about that later. So that's one option, kind of neat. CD-ROM access to locally logged on user only. I mean, you can just, you know, I, I won't go through all of these because it will consume hours and hours of time. But I encourage you, you know, get a copy of 2008 open up the Group Policy Management Console and start looking at some of these. It, it, it will take a while just to familiarize yourself with some of the capabilities of Group Policy. It's, it's a truly rich uh, environment that lets you do just about anything that you can think of.